Hello, this is Linda Carrillo, the NCCAA Planner. Today I will present to you Disaster Preparedness Training. Mission Statement NCCAA works with partners to apply comprehensive strategies to eliminate the causes of poverty for people of Mrs. County. So what does our mission statement have to do with disaster preparedness planning? Well, in order for us to be able to apply comprehensive strategies and eliminate the causes of poverty for our community, we must ensure that we can do this safely in all our program operations. We conduct emergency preparedness because the Office of Head Start and the state of Texas has mandated us to do so. However, most importantly, it is to keep our families, children, and customers that we serve safe while they're receiving our services. For our disaster preparedness plan to be successful, we must practice. Practice continuously throughout the year. Who must practice a disaster preparedness plan? The team. The team includes site-based managers, family advocates, teachers and CDAs, assistant teachers and IT caregivers, and children. This is our primary team. However, any visitors and other agency staff that may be present at the center, such as mentors, SNAs, coordinators, or administration, they also become part of the team, and they must also practice. Types of emergencies and practices. It is important to know the types of disaster threats that exist in our community. And most importantly, we must know what to do in the event that a disaster does take place. At NCCAA, we practice evacuations, lockdowns, and shelter-in-place procedures to help us keep safe. Update and inform. To be effective in our practices, we must ensure we have updated contact information for our children and our staff. We must also learn what goes into an incident report, what procedures are for pickup and for transition, and when to initiate the recovery phase. Emergency contacts and relocation sites. On page two of our disaster preparedness plan, we have included the numbers for emergency services, utility companies, and our agency maintenance department. We have also included an area for our relocation sites to include their addresses and their phone numbers. It is important that we document this information for our relocation sites throughout the entire plan. Emergency practice drills. We practice evacuations, shelter in place, and lockdown procedures. For fire drills, we practice evacuations. Fire drills are conducted monthly. For events such as severe storms, we practice shelter in place. And for outside violence, we practice lockdowns. Keep in mind that shelter in place and lockdown drills are practiced four times throughout the school year during the months of August, October, January, and April. Hurricanes, how the process works. Let's start with the lines of communication. Our lines of communication start with the leadership team who will then communicate to our agency staff, who will then communicate with the individuals, families, and children we serve. In the event of a hurricane disaster, the agency leadership team will start informing us of agency events prior to a hurricane making landfall. Within 48 hours of a hurricane, the leadership team will communicate with city and emergency officials to determine what course of action the agency will take. Within 36 hours, a determination to evacuate and dismiss agency operations will be communicated. In 24 hours prior to landfall, agency-wide closures will be communicated and preparations for recovery will take place. Evacuations. Site-based managers or second-in-command will declare an emergency and initiate the evacuation. They will also alert staff of the emergency at hand. Staff must gather children to take action Grab the emergency preparedness plan, first aid kit, and medication box. Please ensure all children in attendance are accounted for. All staff are responsible to provide first aid and medication as needed. Family advocates and teaching staff must ensure they have access to the most recent and updated contact information for each child. During the course of the emergency, it is important to provide emergency status. In the back of the emergency preparedness plan, you will find three status cards to use if you or your group requires help, are clear of danger, or if anyone in your group is a person with a disability. 
Please wait for the all clear from site based managers or second in command before returning to centers and resuming normal activity. Please ensure the relocation site is documented. Also, please know procedures to relocate children have been modified to meet licensing requirements. The following relocation procedures for children have been modified. Toddlers and children who can walk will hold hands and follow the teacher to their relocation sites. Children who are under or over 24 months of age who have limited mobility or have mental, visual, or hearing impairments will use their pediatric mobility tools to walk to their evacuation destination with the assistance of the teacher. Continuously take attendance, follow transition practices, and remain calm to ensure all children are safely evacuated and feel safe until their parents or an authorized person picks up their child. When do we evacuate? Some disasters may call for evacuation, such as hurricanes, fires, flooding, power outages, bomb threats, and even active attacker situations. However, there are times that we may not be able to evacuate, such as with active attackers. Depending on the situation, we may have to take shelter in place, as evacuating may not be safe. Shelter in place and lockdown. Site-based managers or second-in-command will declare an emergency and initiate the shelter in place or lockdown. They will also alert staff of the emergency at hand. Staff must gather children to take action and gather at the shelter in place location, grab the emergency preparedness plan, first aid kit, and medication box. Please ensure all children in attendance are accounted for. All staff are responsible to provide first aid and medication as needed. Make sure all lights are turned off. And depending on the type of situation and emergency, you may need to tape doors shut, use wet towels to fill the bottom of outside leading exit doors, and turn off AC and heating units. If you are taking shelter, please assume the shelter in place position. Family advocates and teaching staff must ensure they have access to the most recent and updated contact information for each child, as they will have to communicate with parents about the event. Please wait for the all clear from first responders, site-based managers, or second-in-command before resuming normal activity and returning to the centers. When should we take shelter in place or lockdown? Disasters such as tornadoes, chemical spills, severe storms, active attackers, or outside violence and area gunfire may require us to take shelter in place or locked on our centers. However, there are times that we may not be able to do so, such as with active attackers. Depending on the situation, we may need to evacuate, as long as it is safe to do so. What do we do if we encounter an active attacker? We alert, lock down, inform, counter, evacuate. Using Alice, A, become aware, remain calm, and act quickly. L, lockdown. If you're not able to evacuate, lock yourself in a room and barricade the entrances. Silence your phones and hide behind large items. Remain quiet. I, inform. If it is safe to do so, maintain continuous communication in as real time as possible with authorities. Information should be clear, direct, and in plain language. Do not use codes. C, Counter. This is a strategy of last resort, and it involves creating distance between you and the attacker. E. Evacuate. If it is safe to evacuate, do so away from the danger. If you are barricaded in a room, use outside leading exit doors or break a window. If the attacker is in a different section of the building, proceed to evacuate away from the incident location. Unidentified person. We must first identify the problem and provide the site-based manager or second-in-command the location and identifying characteristics of the person. Approach. If you feel safe to approach the person and determine the nature and reason of their presence at the site, please do so only if you have your site-based manager's permission. Use your best judgment when deciding to approach a person. You do not have to approach them alone. Ask for identification. Lead the person to the site-based manager's office if possible. If the person is searching for a child at your site, please check the child's records emergency contact information. If there's not a reason for the person to be at your site, please ask them to leave.
If they refuse, call 911 and provide a thorough description of the person. If necessary, declare a lockdown emergency. Weapons found on property. If you find a weapon on agency property, initiate the lockdown procedure. Keep in mind, during a lockdown emergency, under no circumstances should children be released and no one is allowed entrance into or exit out of the building until the all clear notification is given. Unidentified packages. Characteristics of suspicious packages may include inappropriate or unusual labeling, unusual appearance such as a powdery substance on outside packaging, oily stains or odor. Other suspicious signs are ticking sounds or protruding wires from the box or package. If you believe a letter or package is suspicious, stop. Do not handle or open the package. Move away from the package and implement the evacuation protocols if necessary. Ensure that you do not use your cell phone, pager, or two-way radios near package or suspected devices. Be aware of secondary devices. Make note of the characteristics that cause suspicion. Call your manager or supervisor. If necessary, call 911. Site evacuation maps. Below are samples of evacuation floor plans and the aerial maps of each site. Please note the name, address, and phone number of the relocation sites are on the floor plans. Recovery. After a major disaster, we must conduct a damage needs assessment. The director will determine when services will resume, and we must ensure we provide continuity of care for our staff, children, and families. This concludes our disaster preparedness training. I want to thank you for your time. If you have any questions regarding this presentation, please contact me, Linda Carrillo at linda carrillo at nccaatx.org or 361-906-4479. Thank you.